change. That's when I started seeing improvements in the weight room and then it would translate onto the track. I gotta make coffee. I wake myself up, especially if I have, especially if I have morning weights, you know? Right when I wake up, I have to, have to have a large cup of water to open everything, wake everything up. I'll just put a little bit of creamer. It's just a uh, soy creamer. Soy. <laughs> yeah. I like the taste of soy. I try not to have it too much, but I'll either go between soy or I'll have almond milk or just whole milk. But I just don't like it black, so just something that'll take away that the strong taste of the coffee. It's always so hot, but... All right. It's always that first sip of coffee that like just wakes you up and you're like, oh, okay. Like, it's gonna be okay. Today's gonna be okay. Um, and while that's going, then I'll just start my breakfast, which is super simple in the morning because I'm so tired and I don't want to have to think, so I'll just make my Greek yogurt bowl. Do you see a theme? Do you see a theme anywhere? No? First, I measure everything. I know exact. I mean, I know pretty much what a quarter of a cup is of blueberries, but I measure it anyway just because um, I just want to be accurate as possible. It's just like an extra step that I take. And if I get a couple extra blueberries, like that. So I'll munch on them too. So when I put it in the app, I can be as accurate as possible with like my carbs, my proteins, my fats. So it's really important actually to measure it out or to weigh it. I have a little weigher over there that um, I actually stole from my mom when she did figure competition like eight years ago. And I was like, mom, can I have this? She's like, yeah, no problem. Just a quarter cup of raspberries. So uh, yeah, when I'm just sitting down and kind of munching, I'll be on my phone and that's when I just add everything in. Also because I'm so hungry in the morning that all I can think about is eating and I'm kind of a creature of habit. So for me, um, using the app in the morning like starts my day. It's like, okay, you gotta you know put in what you're eating for breakfast. And uh, it almost gives me like a sense of uh, like security, like in my head where I'm like, okay, now I can start my day and I have enough energy because like I was saying too, before macro stacks, I, I had no idea. I was just like, okay, I'll have carbs because people say that carbs are really good for runners. So I'm just gonna eat a lot of carbs. And then I didn't understand why I was still tired. I would drink coffee and I'm like, okay, I'm still tired. And I was realizing that I wasn't having enough like fats, proteins. Like I didn't actually even have enough carbs either. But um, yeah, my protein was so low, it was so bad. I had no idea. I'm not super creative when I make breakfast. So these Greek yogurt bowls, just to make me happy in the morning. I try to make them as pretty as possible. For me, like every practice I treat as competition and um, I need to be fully prepared and have energy. Cause if I go to the track and I don't have energy and I just, you know, I'm lagging a little bit, my practice is gonna show that and then that's a day that I'm losing. So now, after I've gotten a couple bites in and I'm not that hungry, <laughs> um, I'll just get on my app. And then before I start adding things in, I'll put in, um, if I have a workout and what time of the day I have a workout in so that it'll kind of adjust everything so that um, I'm having like, you know, eating at the right times to fuel me for practice and after practice. But yeah, now we're finished eating. This list, I actually, so I see a sports psychologist and I dealt with a lot of like mental struggles. And so this was written in my journal and then I also have them written on cards so when I go to meets, I'll tape them around the hotel. But these are things that um, are personal for me. So when I get anxiety and I get nervous, I put pressure on myself to do really well. Um, I always tell myself, that should be number one, but I just put it down there in big bold letters, I'm loved. Like I'm always loved no matter what. I'm prepared, I know I'm prepared. Um, I've been here before, uh, I've learned so much, I know what to do, I know my routine, I can adjust because, and then I think back at times that something didn't go my way but I was able to adjust and it turned out perfectly. Um, and then I'll always find a way, no matter what. Yeah, just little reminders every day so when I wake up and I see it, but yeah, these are like my pinpoint things that I like believe in that I see, or, you know what I mean? So for me, as far as body image, I was always so, so skinny. Like a lot of people make fun of me and said I was like anorexic, bulimic, and just, like it was so hard for me. So even in the summers, like it's 110 degrees in Arizona, 
I would wear pants because I didn't want to show my legs and I never liked to show my arms because they were so small. People would just come up and like go like this to my wrist, like, oh, you're so skinny. And I know it sounds like people are like, okay, you know, but it was really hurtful and I hated it. Um, but I was also really picky with eating, so it didn't help that like, I probably didn't eat much when I was younger, but that wasn't the reason. I was just growing tall and I wasn't filling out fast enough. So I, you know, I was just really lanky and um, kind of awkward and I was really shy growing up. I didn't start changing my diet until college when I started getting injured. Um, Cause in high school I was still eating out. You know, my mom went back to school when she was 40 years old. So she sometimes had two jobs and she was going back to school. So there were a lot of times that, you know, she would leave me stuff, but they're like TV dinners or something like that. Or, you know, leave me money and be like, hey, Georgianne, like, can you go get something to go eat? So yeah, that's when I just started changing it. I was like, oh, I guess I'm, you know, all I could afford in college was like tilapia. So I was like, I'll have tilapia and I'll have some rice, minute rice, and then I'll have a vegetable. And that's as far as I knew um, with nutrition. I was like, that's healthy. You have your vegetable, you have a carb, and you have like meat that has to be good for you, you know? And so that's what I ate every day. Um, and I would make my, I would make my lunches. So I would have sandwiches and I'd bring them to class and then I'd have fruit and, um, just little vegetables to snack on and sometimes hummus. And that's when it started to evolve. And I, I just started to it just gradually every year. I started to learn more about food and how to cook it in different ways to make it good that I wanted to have it. We, we never had a dietitian and a, or a nutritionist at U of A. We finally have one now that I'm gone. <laughs> but. Um, so it was just like me and me talking to my coach, like, hey coach, what do you think? I don't know. And he's like, try this or, you know, tuna. And like, okay, I'll have tuna. <laughs> like just trying to figure out things that work for me. When I came in my freshman year of college, I had the highest body fat out of all the sprinters. And I weighed the less, the least. I weighed 115 pounds from me, not even 112 pounds. And I was like five nine, you know? And <laughs> like, I had like 20, 23%, which is, you know, for an athlete, you know, a lot of the other girls were closer to 15, 17, you know, 13, and I was 20 something, and uh, I was just skin, bones, and fat. I didn't really have muscle. I was really weak in the weight room. And so as my diet changed, that's when I started seeing improvements in the weight room, and then it would translate onto the track. And I would say 2012 was when everything really started to come together, and it showed on the track, showed in the weight room. Yeah, it's changed a lot for me. I was doing a hurdle drill and I fell right on my knee and I pulled my PCL. And that's the only way you can pull a PCL is like direct knee contact. And it's just like, I do these drills every day, you know? And I'm just like, how did this happen to me? Um, but it was the greatest thing that ever happened to me because I sat out indoor season and Coach was like, this is when you gotta be a professional at everything you can control. That's your food, that's sleeping, that is recovery, the things that you have control over. You can't help that you can't run right now. Don't worry, let me take care of that. We'll do pull workouts. Let me stress about that. You just worry about um, taking care of your body and fueling it properly. And that's when I just started to like look up recipes like on Pinterest, healthy dinner recipes, and then just see what came up and make that. So right now, um, we're gonna go to my movement specialist. It's like a bunch of functional movement type of exercises that I do. Um, I started seeing him when I hurt my back in 2016 and he saved my career. So you'll see us do a lot of things that really is just like core dominated, so. It's weird because like the things that he puts me through don't look very hard, and then when you do them, you're like, wow. And I'm like sweating, I mean, it's, it can get pretty intense for sure. So we're at Modus, this is my movement specialist. Um, usually see him once or twice a week. Um, I love coming in here. I learn, I feel like I learn more about my body every time I come in. Uh, Chip is awesome. Check in and like, yeah, you can like hit my core decently hard, you yeah, know what I mean? Because yeah, I want it to feel like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now her best friend, who is an uh, employee of mine, just happened to say, hey, I've got a guy that can work with you and uh, just, just want to talk. So we talked and uh, I taught her a lot about her core. And that was uh, the beginning. That conversation was kind of like the framework of what we were going to do. As an athlete develops, and you know, before she met me, there was, you know, lifting and training and running was a process of just loading the system or, you know, loading more weight to, to get faster uh, in the weight room or running faster on the, on the, and the only method of measuring that was through speeds or weights. The problem was her body utilized a method that was really, um, disservice to her spine because it got her into these altered mechanics that eventually 
contributed to the spinal injury. The first, the first opportunity was just to teach her what the spine, spine was supposed to be doing. And, um, and that's, you know, kind of like educating about her, you know, how muscles are supposed to work, how the core is supposed to work in relation to all the other parts. And, um, and that, so it, at the beginning, it was just a uh, kind of a, a, a process of teaching her how to understand her body better. Strongest at attribute in what we do is her understand, her willing to listen, her, her, uh, her awareness that what got her to where she at where she's at or before I met her was then inadequate to continue in that that same process and, and her willingness to kind of reach out and say I'm taking a big leap and going outside my uh, my close network of coaches and, and uh, getting together and then those last one or two percent moments in the weight room on the track uh, you know in practice make a difference in how she's going to choose how his body's on body works on reflex it doesn't work on thinking it's uh you know if we're if we're thinking we're slow so body's all working on reflex and if you train it to have better moments of reflex moments it's, it's probably not going to get hurt and usually uh, better performance it's called my loaded bagel sandwich yeah pre-workout meal typically what i eat almost every day for lunch yeah, I love it. It's super tasty. As they get away. And then about four. Smush it. I'm not really patient in the kitchen all the time, so that's why everything is super quick, super easy. And yeah, perfect. 574 calories. Everything I need for my workout today, which is going to be a lot of stuff. I'm going to be lifting and running, plyometrics, so... It's weird, you would think I have a favorite athlete in my sport, and I do, like I like them as people, but like growing up I never like looked at athletes as like, oh, these idols. It was always my mom who was my idol. <laughs> it sounds weird, but it was. It was just like, I looked up to my mom, and like, um, she was in the Marine Corps, she was a single mother, um, she went back to school at the age of 40, like, that's the person I look up to. Uh, when you make it to a certain point in your life, like when I had made the Olympics, I thought it was just gonna be all, you know, peaches and cream after that. I was like, oh, this is great. And then there started to be pressures, like there's pressures on me, like um, I couldn't lose. Oh, you let someone that's not an Olympian beat you? Like let them, I didn't let them, like you get beat, you know? And so to be able to be at the top and um, just continue to stay there, that's really difficult. So anyone that can do that, whether it's a LeBron, a Kobe, or like Serena, I mean, those are our typical people we think about. Um, it's a lot harder than I think people might give them credit for, for sure. You know, because if they have a bad game, the world just goes crazy. Like, what? What's what's wrong with them? Well, maybe they're dealing with life like everyone else is dealing with things in their personal life that sometimes reflect on the court or on the track. What are we doing today at the track? Um, today we're gonna do 30 meter sprint outs with like full recovery rest. So it'll be like five minutes of rest. And then we will do lifting with a bunch of plyos, box jumps, um, different types of things. So right now, it's about a 20, 25 minute drive, so that's when I'll drink my Fuel 5 um, from X Endurance. It's just my carb drink. Just to give me a little more energy, and since I don't want to eat right before I go run, this is perfect, because it's liquid. Just mix it with some water. I started running at the prime age of 15. Uh, we have about seven different warm-ups, so this one's weight room warm-up, which is one of our shortest ones. So I'll just do that, which is a bunch of drills, and then I'll do some hurdle drills just to open up my hips a little bit. And then I will do six times 30 meters with full recovery, which is five minutes, um, just to get some speed, speed training in, and then I'll do my specific power training. Really, my goal is just, I want to make the world team. That's obvious, and... Um, I have goals, you know, once I make the world team. But first things first, I just want to be healthy and continue to just work on the small things like my recovery and eating and sleeping so that I give myself the best possible chance to to go out there and, you know, be able to compete without <laughs> having any type of injury or anything. Yeah, so I, my goals are more mental based, to be honest, because I'm not worried physically. I know that I put in the work. I know that I'm strong and that I'm fit and, you know, I don't, I don't cheat my way there. I, I, I do everything possible so that I can 
get to where I want. Um, it's just a matter of it's just a matter of keeping my mind in the right space and um, getting excited and remembering that why I do this. So if I can keep my mind in the right place, I know that I'm gonna just be fine. It's it's hard not to put pressure on yourself and you know because we want we're competitors. We want. We want to always PR. We want to get gold medals and make world teams and Olympics and all these things that we just put so much pressure on ourselves. And in the end, we end up not reaching those goals when we when we when we do that. So just to enjoy the process is really what I'm trying to do and take it a day at a time. Just start with some like hand cleans, like just the bar to warm up, and then power cleans. Okay. Yeah, we'll start with the hand cleans. For me, like I was talking about, like nutrition, it's um, it's it's come a long way for me, and I think a lot of the reasons why I had injuries um, while I was in college was because I wasn't getting the proper nutrients that I needed. You know, I, I stress my body and I exert my muscles to their max multiple times a day. I mean, multiple times in the week, and so for me. Um, if I'm not replenishing my muscles and I'm not giving it what it needs, you know, it's gonna it's gonna have to find its sources somewhere else, and it's gonna have to if it doesn't have the energy, it's gonna have to feed off the muscle. And I, I work so hard in the weight room and do these things that, like, for me, just realizing, like, actually seeing on paper, because in my head it's one thing to to think like, oh, I'm getting enough of this or enough of that, but I, I didn't truly understand. Um, what had protein really. Some of the things I was like, oh that has protein? Oh, I didn't have no idea. Or how like, um, how much better I feel during the day. And like, for me going to practice, I I'm not allowed to be tired before practice because that's, that's a day that I'll lose. If I go to practice and I'm not able to give, you know, my full efforts, I mean, that's a, that's a day. And I, like, I know it sounds like, oh a day, but a day here, a day there. I mean, that really adds up and especially when um, my body is my instrument in my sport. You know, some sports, it's a skilled sport. Um, you can get away with being 85%. I can't get away with being 85% on the track. You know, I, I step up to the blocks and um, if I'm, you know, feeling okay, don't have all the energy, kind of injured, I mean, it's gonna show. There's no hiding it. It's a very unforgiving sport. So for me, um, I, need, I need to know what I'm putting in my body and I need to know what to eat before I work out and after I work out so that I can properly, um, you know, give my body what it, what it needs. And yeah, so before macro stacks, really, I was just kind of shooting in the dark a little bit. <laughs> like, yeah, um, I, I think I'm getting enough of food, but I just can't emphasize enough how, how it's changed the way that I feel. I, I used to be so tired and I just could not understand. I was like, I'm taking naps, I'm drinking coffee. Why am I tired? And now I understand. There's no question, you know, and um, it's made a huge difference. I just, I'm able to just give 100% when I go to the weight room and um, get stronger and faster and I feel the most fit I've ever been. Um, I'm not worried about um, going to a competition and not understanding how I'm gonna feel. Like I know exactly how I'm gonna feel because I know what I need to eat and when I need to eat it so that I'm fully prepared when it comes time to race or comes time to do a really hard practice. Now I'm gonna do my protein shake and then eat some dried mangoes while I drive home, which is about a 35 minute drive, and then start cooking my dinner. <laughs> I don't want to have to think of what to eat. I don't have to. 
Um, but I think also the life or like the chat, you know what I mean? Being able to have questions about nutrition and being a little, if you're confused about something, you know, you can go into the chat and ask questions. Um, I think that's really beneficial for a lot of people. I know a lot of people, like my teammates, they struggle. One of my teammates gotten after a stack. She's like, I really want to get better with my eating and stuff like that and knowing what I'm putting in my body. And so she's really excited. She loves it. So now after I have uh, a couple bites of my dinner, I'm just going to enter in um, everything. Yeah, so after I eat, then I'll just, um, like my time to myself is usually just sit on my couch and I'll do my recovery. So I'll do my power dot um, and just put it on and then watch a couple shows um, while it's going. And then um, I'll have an electrolyte drink before I go to sleep just because if I feel like I didn't have enough water throughout the day, I definitely want to do that. So uh, do that and just hang out until like 10 o'clock, 10.30 and then head to bed.